Hishi and It by Marge Piercy was published in 1991, and under its other title, Body of Glass, it won the Arthur C. Clarke Award, which is why I read it. It's a science fiction novel set in the mid-21st century in a world that is now a toxic wasteland with unbreathable air. It's mainly about a woman trying to regain custody of her son from her ex-husband, but it's also about a small independent town going up against a monolithic corporation in cyberspace and what it means to be a person. There are two storylines here. In the first one, Shira loses custody of her son to her ex-husband, who is backed by the corporate multi-YS that she worked for. With no further options, she accepts a job offer from Avram, a family friend, and returns to her hometown of Tikva. There, she is engaged to work with and socialize Yod, the latest in a line of cyborgs that Avram has been creating to defend Tikva physically and in cyberspace. Shira's grandmother was also involved in creating Yod, specifically in programming him and giving him sexual desire and some other very human traits and behaviors. Shira and Yod begin a sexual relationship, and then they discover that YS, that corporate multi that Shira had been working for, is now attacking Tikva because it wants Yod, and it's using Shira's son as leverage. In the second storyline, Malka is telling a story to Yod about a Jewish ghetto in 17th century Prague where a rabbi creates a golem to defend the Jewish people. There are some things about this novel that I really enjoyed. It has some great cyberpunk elements without feeling like an outright cyberpunk novel. I'm not sure if Piercy intended that, if she was trying to kind of engage with the cyberpunk genre or not, but I felt like there were similarities, and in this case it really worked for me, whereas I usually don't enjoy those core cyberpunk novels very much, and I think they don't age very well. But actually the, the world building overall in the story really worked. It's also climate science fiction, and you have this real sense that um, climate change, the pollution of the environment, the, basically the poisoning of the earth is kind of the catalyst for the social change, the territorial changes that have created the tensions and conflict and the situation, including cyberspace warfare, that the story is based on. But I do think that the one thing I will definitely remember this book for is how it includes Jewish religion, culture, and history that really makes it stand out and gave it an additional layer. However, I did end up struggling with quite a bit of this novel. I had definite problems with the story structure, some of the characters, and even the feminism. First, this is a large book, and the dual storylines were so similar that they were repetitive. Rather than enhancing each other, the historical fable versus the futuristic science fiction tale, they were too disconnected. These, these storylines were never in conversation, so they really felt like two separate novels unnecessarily combined into one. Secondly, all the men featured in the story are kinda awful, and it didn't need to be that way. There's a reason why Shira ends up with Yod. He's not a human man. All of her relationships with real human men have been kind of awful. So she chooses the person who looks like a man but doesn't act like one. I'm sure you could go into a lot of commentary on that, but I'm not going to. But really, the thing that I felt was massively missing from this story was a conversation about consent and respecting someone's boundaries. The women in the story put up with some absolutely disgusting behavior from men, and I'm mostly pointing my finger at Gotti, who is Avram's son and Shira's former lover, who just won't leave her alone. Like, no means no, gentlemen. No doesn't mean keep trying for 15 years. It means leave me the hell alone. Just to give you an idea of some of the things that Gotti gets up to, he violates his current lover by filming her body and sharing it with an entertainment company against her explicit request not to. He's also a serial sexual harasser who regularly sleeps with extremely young women, and he's been convicted for it. But nobody complains. There are no real consequences for him doing any of this, and he is always, always welcomed home by his community and the women in his life. I think the main ideas of this book are about relationships, 
the attachments that people form with each other and women's sexuality, especially sexuality detached from expectations of marriage and traditional feminine roles. And then there's that really big theme of what it means to be a person. We have faceless masses of poor people who are ignored by, you know, the, the fantastically rich corporations and the wealthy elite. We have the cyborgs and the golems who are created in the image of mankind but denied personhood by their communities and their makers. Like, who gets to decide what is a person and what is not? Who gets to decide whether you deserve your freedom, your life, and your rights? What I ultimately thought about this book is that it's an interesting piece of feminist science fiction that really shows how far that feminist dialogue has come in the past 30 years. I think that when it was published, the way it handles women's sexuality, their relationships, the matriarchal family would have been fantastic. But kind of by today's standards, it doesn't go quite far enough, especially in allowing women to defend themselves and stand up for themselves vocally and socially. This was a very mixed bag of a book for me. I feel like I'm mixing my metaphors there. Um, I enjoyed it as science fiction, less so viewed through the feminist lens. I think you can kind of see that with what didn't work so well for me. I really did enjoy it more than the other novel I've read by Piercy, which is Woman on the Edge of Time. That book is much, much darker than he, she, and it. Um, but I do kind of wonder at this point if Piercy's novels really aren't what I'm looking for these days, maybe I would have really enjoyed them in the 80s and 90s, but not so much in 2019. And that is it from me on He, She, and It by Marge Piercy. Do let me know if you have read this book and what you thought of it. Maybe leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.